For this introduction, I want to cover a few different items and give you an idea of how unionist politicians, in this case David Mundell, tries to influence us away from independence and staying in the union in the context of Brexit. Welcome to Indiecoms. My name's John Hanna. Now, one of the things I wanted to do for IndyRef2 was to teach people how unionist politicians use linguistics or language, analog marking, anchoring, and other techniques to influence people. Now, I teach neuro-linguistic programming, hypnotherapy, conversational hypnosis, and I want to show you how what people say isn't necessarily what they're saying. Now, I'm launching a social media site for independent supporters to campaign from. One of the contributions I'll make to that site, amongst other things, is a series of short videos where I'll teach techniques that often go over people's heads. So let's get started and have a wee listen to David Mundell. I'm travelling to Paraguay and Argentina over the next few days to bang the drum for Scottish business. So David off to Paraguay and Argentina to bang the drum for Scottish business. This is quite bizarre because during Indy F1, David said that Scotland was essentially extinguished because of the Act of Union. So he appears to be making it all about Scotland. However, it's only in the context of going via the UK to get that worldwide trade, as we'll see further on in the video. As we leave the EU. As we leave the EU. Now, this is a presupposition in conversational hypnosis. He's presupposing that we will leave the EU. So, in effect, discounting any other options. Now, if Brexit bites hard, Scotland may, during the next independence referendum, vote yes to stay in the EU rather than no to stay in the UK. We need to strengthen our trading arrangements with countries all over the world. We've got a good uh, current uh, business relationship with both Argentina and Paraguay. We've export, for example, 26 million pounds of whiskey to these countries. And so in this statement, he's telling you what we need to do. And the need is a modal operator of necessity. Lots of people need to do things, and they will do that through fear or obligation. Now, he's telling you it's necessary, and I suspect to a degree it is, but he's now taking your attention away from the EU towards the rest of the world. He's guiding you through his story. When he says we, we're not sure here if he means the UK or Scotland, because there's an issue at the moment with where the tax take is a portion to either England or Scotland, depending on where the whisky leaves from. So we don't know if it leaves from Dover, we don't know where it leaves from, and if it leaves from Dover, it may not even be attributed to Scotland as a revenue. That's a story that should be investigated, not part of this video. I'm just highlighting some linguistic patterns that may not fully be true. I'm hoping to promote the fact that we should uh, export even more. Hoping. Yeah, there's always hope. David's trying to instill hope uh, because he doesn't know if anything will actually happen. Now, promoting the fact that we should export more can't be challenged either, really, because you could assume that we should export more. Now, the phrase even more, he's analogue marked. He said even more, separate from the rest of the sentence. Even more is a comparative deletion. Even more than what? We don't really know. David's comparing the amount we should export to, uh, well, nothing really. So he hasn't stated what the comparison is. He's not being specific about what he will achieve. We want to build new relationships. We want to build a global Britain. So this is a really interesting part. He's gone from Scotland, leaving the EU, to a global Britain. When he says we, he actually includes you as well unconsciously, whether you like it or not. But he probably means the Tories and Britain and the way he sees things happening. A global Britain will be the focus and Scotland can do business through that global Britain. So he's making Britain the gateway to the world for Scotland. He isn't allowing Scotland that global access. Scotland has to rely on the UK for this expanded trading world. From which Scotland uh, can uh, and will do business. So Scotland can't do business on its own. That global Britain is the place from where Scotland will do business. 
the, there's a coaching phrase in here, I can and I will. So when David says Scotland can and will do business, that's a reframe, a motivational reframe that takes a situation from impossible to possible. So he's trying to allude to a situation that is possible for Scotland to do something, again, via the UK, but not on its own. I'm looking forward very much to being in both Paraguay and Argentina and looking forward. David uses the phrase looking forward here, but he does it twice. Now it takes you, the phrase itself takes you away from where we were to where we're going because you're looking forward to his message or his story, a global Britain. But the other thing he does here is he analogue marks. He uses that phrase twice, so that kind of sticks out. At an unconscious level, as humans, we are pattern recognition machines. And at an unconscious level, that will be picked up as something different from the rest of the conversation. So he's, he's analogue marking, he's anchoring that phrase looking forward and hope to influence you more than he already thinks he is. To ensuring that after Scottish business stands, a better chance of doing business there. So a couple of things happening there. Let's look at after. Now after is a presupposition of time. We don't know if this is after Brexit or after his visit or when it might be. So it's deliberately ambiguous. The other thing here that he says is a better chance. So in other words, you may not have as good a chance if you don't do what he's telling you to do. Again, that's a comparative deletion. David's also ensuring that Scotland stands a better chance. That's a claim that he can't really make. And that we are in a strong position to trade with these South American countries. And that we are in a strong position. So that statement taken on its own, analogue marked the way he'd done it, he, he marked out the we are, then that assumes at an unconscious level that we're in a stronger position already, which we're not. And it's debatable as to whether we will ever be. Now, I'll be doing lots of other types of work on Indycoms and hope that other people will join in. And hopefully this gives you some kind of idea as to the work that I'll be doing around influence and you can use some of these techniques yourself or you can use your knowledge to challenge politicians in the future. It's um, a fabulous area of work and it just never ends. And you may start throwing things at the TV though when you start and watch politicians and you can pick up all these nuances of what's actually being said. Now, Indycoms is about lots of things. Here's a very, very quick taster. Thanks for listening and I'll speak to you soon.